The Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development is still battling with mining license holders who have barely undertaken any meaningful activities across allocated areas. The prolification of, of licenses given to people who have nothing, and just waving them trying to sell. Now we want to go to bidding round so that we really go and carry out due diligence, critical due diligence to the people who apply, the applicants, so that you get people who can do something. So that uh, if Ugandans, without Ugandans, we don't have a lot of money. We are encouraged to partner with others who have the money. Currently, more than 100 key mineral deposits are spread across the country, but whose exploration and mining licenses are being held by foreign players. As production licenses are given, as we embark on implementation of the standard railway, as we get the, the dams being built, as we get the pipelines, the refineries going, there is an outcry for Uganda and its involvement. And we must be structured to make sure all Ugandans are meaningfully involved. And as direct foreign capital inflows remain low, hampering the recovery of the local currency as much, the Uganda Chamber of Mines and Petroleum is now optimistic. Taxes on exploration, on oil and gas, and abolish the taxes on mining, which makes Uganda a very unique country in the region, because that's not the case with others. And so, Uganda's uh, space for investment is the most attractive space. Besides minerals, Uganda is still counting on its yet-to-be exploited oil and gas deposits as deals on commercialization of production through a pipeline and refinery still hangs in the balance. Reina Ojun, NTV Business.